Hey everybody, thank you for clicking on the video. I appreciate your support. Please subscribe and like. Thank you. And for those that are new to the channel, what I do is I take electronic projects from old electronic magazines from around the world, you name it. And I take that project and I build it and I bring it to life and then I demonstrate it to you. That's what I do, or at least I try. So this time around, I'm not going to go for the popular magazines like Popular Electronics or Radio Electronics or Electronics Today. Um, I found a new magazine and I guess I should have been aware of it a long time ago. It's called the Elector Magazine. And apparently from what I'm looking at right now, it began in the Netherlands in the 1960s. And then they got an English version in 1975. And so there was a French version. I'm reading this from the internet. And yeah, so um, I, I like it. I like it a lot. And in fact, when you go to the webpage, they still are issuing, I guess, electronic magazines, so to speak. Um, there's projects up there. Uh, so I'm, I'm really interested. So the format, I've read a couple of the magazines already. And the format is, is good. I think it's a little bit... Uh, it's a step up, I guess, from some of the typical projects from all the other magazines. Um, and each issue of the magazine has more than one project. So I'm probably going to get a wealth of um, content from this magazine. But we're going to see how it goes first because I want to do one project and, like I said, we'll take it from there. Um, so, yeah, so what is the project? The project today is a milliohm meter that's right, you heard me. A meter that measures really, really low resistance. So let's get into it. If there's anybody out there that's had past experience with the Elector magazine and the projects, if you could leave a comment and tell me what your experience was, that would be great. Was it too easy? Was it too hard? Uh, were you successful with the project? Uh, let me know in the comments. I would appreciate it. So back to the whole milliohm meter that we're going to build today, right? Well, as we know, a normal multimeter is not the greatest when it comes down to the milliohm range, right? I mean, the test length, the test lead length would probably cause some terms or some amount of resistance. The oxidization of the banana plugs maybe would increase the, the resistance. Gosh, um, who knows? There could be a whole bunch of other factors too. But this meter supposedly will eliminate all of that and I'm going to try to explain it the best I can and I've wrote some notes down from the explanation from the article. All right so here goes I don't know how well I'm going to explain this but I'm going to try my best. So this meter if you didn't already notice on the pictures that I was showing you earlier it actually has four leads instead of two like a normal meter would right? Well supposedly the way it works is there, and I'm showing you a graphic right now. If you look at those two outer leads, those are going to be for current. So there's going to be a current set, a constant current flowing through the resistor. So there are RX in the middle. That's our resistor under test. So the actual device will actually send a current, constant current through it. And on top of that, we've got the two other leads. And those are normal, regular leads that you're going to connect to the resistor that are going to be really close to the actual part of the resistor. We don't want the lead length of the resistor to impact our result also, right? So we're going to have those two leads uh, closest to the resistor. And as mentioned earlier, we're going to have the two other leads uh, sending some current through the actual resistor. It's not important where that current uh, connection is made on the resistor, but that's, that's what we've got. And apparently... Since it's a constant current, and if we know what that constant current is, and that that doesn't change, we can then take the actual voltage reading uh, under the, or sorry, the resist, yeah, well, the, the voltage that's applied to the resistor, so the Rx and the minus, plus Rx and minus Rx, it's voltage, and um, get that voltage, we can then actually get the actual resistance, right? Ohm's law. It's pretty simple. Now, there is a couple problems, and the one or problem that the articles mentioned was, 
we kind of need a high current. And since the resistor is really going to be low anyway, we've got to, you know, we've got to be careful, right? Because if we've got a quarter watt resistor in there, that's whatever, 0.1 ohm or something like that, we're going to burn it out. So the device is built so that we're going to send a pulse and the pulse will be really short. Uh, versus the off time, right? But it's a constant current, like it'll be equivalent to one amp, for example. And yeah, so from that, and apparently from what I read on the article, on the off time is then when we do a sample of the voltage and probably the current too. Now I haven't really read that far into the article with regards to how the schematic works and gets those results, but there is a sample and hold kind of thing on the off time of that pulse current. Anyway, so that's generally how we get uh, a low resistance value or measurement of a low resistor. And yeah, so that's the basic understanding from what I got. Maybe I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, please leave a comment. I would really appreciate it. I like to learn all the time. So I'm showing you these specifications, the so-called specifications, in how these electronic magazine projects always go. You never get the same result, but we're gonna try. Um, yeah, so I'm showing you the schematic now, and I kind of think I see the sections of the block diagram within that schematic. Obviously, we can see the power supply in the top right-hand corner. Uh, to the left of that, I believe, is our uh, pulse generator. And then in the middle, to the left a little bit, is our sample on hold, I believe. And at the bottom left-hand corner, could, could that be the constant current? I think it might be. And beside that, I think that's the... Uh, well, actually, it is. I'm just looking at the block diagram. That's the error detector. So for some reason, if something doesn't go right, I think maybe if you're not on the correct range or something like that, that error detection part of the circuit will uh, flash that LED you see at the very bottom there. And then, of course, to the right, we've got IC3, which is probably the meter circuit, right? Along with the selector switch at the very top. Anyway, I could be wrong, but th that's just the way I see it from a high-level overview. Anyway, I think I've talked long enough. We should probably get into building the circuit. So let me just show you the parts that I've gathered. All right, so here are the parts for the milliometer. Uh, we're going to use a, an adapter, a wall wart, that I think is 15 volts, but we only need 10, I think, or something like that, maybe 12. Anyway, the board is in the middle, and yes, I've already etched it, and it's drilled out. I did that, uh, be, and plus another project, by the way. So I did three boards at one time. It just makes it easier because, you know, getting the etch end out and then blah, blah, blah. In any event, that's done. Board looks uh, pretty good, actually. I think maybe there's one break in there. I'll have to fix that. But otherwise, it's really good. Yeah, I've got all the other parts. I think we're ready to go. So let's do that. Let's build the circuit. Let's put those components on that PC board. <music> everything is done now. I've got everything connected. I've got the test leads for the current and the resistance and I've got my DC um, from the wall wart or the adapter uh, plug to the left and you can actually see the meter now that's uh, connected to it. Um, the, the meter face, it's actually off. Anyway, I'll have to adjust that. Um, but the actual meter face, there was a uh, a copy of it on the actual in the magazine so what I did is I cut it out electronically and then um, put it into a photo editor and cleaned it up and yeah it looks okay um, so we do have a problem uh, there was one problem earlier where uh, I had a trace that was shorted out these very fine traces I fixed that it definitely did give me different results um, I think much better, but there's still something wrong with it. I can't align the the the, the unit the um whatever this thing is. I totally forgot. <laughs> um, what is this thing? I totally forgot. It's uh, 
a milliometer. That's what it is. My gosh. I just got so many projects on the go, so I'm getting a little uh, confused. Anywho, so I'm going to do some more troubleshooting. So I'm going to check uh, some of the th stuff in there, like the, the pulse generator. Um, I'll put it under the scope. If I find anything interesting, I'll bring it back in. Okay, I'm super happy. I've got it working. So let me tell you my problems. There's a TO92 Zener diode here. That was reversed. And according to, I, I, I made it, well, I thought what was correct according to the layout, circuit board layout from the magazine, but it isn't. You have to reverse that. So if anybody else is building this in the future, keep an eye on that. It's an LM339 2.5 volt Zener diode. It's adjustable, but we're not using the adjustable lake of the of the actual zener diode and also there was a 3.9k resistor over here it was a used resistor and the lead lengths were very short however i thought i had it in but apparently i didn't you know you'd read 10 volts here on the top side you go on the bottom side and it was nothing zero anyway took it out put a proper uh, 3.9k resistor with long leads and presto i got it to work thank god in any event um, you need precision resistors. You need a 1 ohm, 1% 1 resistor, and you need a 0.5 ohm, 1% uh, resistor to align it. Now, I just, uh, I put 11 10 ohm resistors in parallel. I got 1 ohm on my meter. So, you know, it's it's not accurate, but it's it's good for ballpark because I just wanted to see if this thing works, right? And then I also, you also need a 0.5 ohm resistor uh, at 1% too. So this is a 0.47 ohm resistor, and I don't know what the tolerance value is, but this just gives me an idea. It works and it does. So I'm on the actual uh, half ohm or 500 milliohm range. So I'm just going to plug it in and I can't leave it plugged in long because that uh, voltage regulator there and the transistor, that, which you can't see is there, needs heat sink. So when I build it in a case, I'll, I can actually externally bring them out and uh, tack them onto the uh, case or, or a heat sink of some sort. In any event, so I am on the 500 scale here. You can see it's actually at 500. Now, this is a 470 milliohm resistor, um, but I'm reading about well, 500, maybe a little less than 500. But again, this isn't, um, I don't know the tolerance, right? But we're in the ballpark. And I've tried some other resistors, the same thing, in the ballpark. So when I get, let me unplug this. So when I get uh, this thing in the case, the lead lengths will be shorter for, for our testing. And I'll align it properly with 1% resistors. I'll buy some. And I'll demonstrate it one more time. All right, I'll bring you back in when I get that done. <music> So as you can see, we're done. It turned out really good. I'm really surprised. Now the really low, low range, you'll see the 0.1 ohm range there. It's not that great, but all the other ranges are pretty good. Um, so yeah, just a quick description. We've got, remember the four leads that I had mentioned in the introduction. So the one on the, the two on the outer edge are for the current. So that's going to send a constant current through it. And the two leads in the middle actually measure the resistance. So through the magic of electronics, we get uh, a resistance on the meter. The meter isn't the greatest, okay? So this is like an $11 job from China off of eBay. I have started to notice that the quality isn't as great. Well, what do you want for the price, right? But if I can get my hands on some proper and good made in the United States or Canada meters, then those are the ones I'll try to use. But all the new ones are on in China. But we get uh, pretty good results with that meter. So just a quick description. We've got the power on and off. And then we've got an over range. And then we got 5 to 1, 0 0.5, 0 0.2, 0 0.1 ohms. 
the bottom being a hundred milliohms, right? Uh, so yeah, so that it's done. So let me uh, just turn the power on. I've got a uh, three ohm resistors. So these are precision resistors. I spent like $30, which includes shipping and tax for like five resistors, but I think it'll be worth it in the end. I'll keep these resistors separate. Um, yeah. So, uh, gosh, darn it. What was I going to say? So yeah, the, the two other ones are for the current. I think I said that. Yeah. Anyway, let me turn it on. So I'm on the five ohm range, which would make sense because this is a three ohm um resistor and if we're looking i know it's very tiny you can't really see it uh, but we're on the top scale which is the zero to 500 so we're bang on we're right on 300 milliohms or sorry three ohms so that's a high value resistor so let me get it set up with a smaller resistor okay so i've got a one ohm one percent resistor resistor and let me turn the power on and we're on the two ohm scale so you can see it here so that's the middle range and it's right in the center so it's one ohm which is bang on i'll go to the one ohm scale and there we go now it's a little bit over i must admit um i don't know if it's the meter or not but i did align this thing there is a, a protocol in which you have to align it with precision resistors these ones in fact so you know it's again it's a magazine project right so you're not going to get lab quality results um but close enough i think let me uh, put even a lower resistance um resistor on it okay so i've got a hundred milli ohm resistor or 0.1 ohm resistor which is very small when you think about it. Try to measure that on your normal <clears throat> multimeter. You're probably not going to get a good result. Anyway, I don't even know. Uh, well, I'm on the one ohm scale, so I'll just turn the power on here. I'll go down. And I'm at the actual 100 milli ohm scale. And you can see it's almost a, a right on the money. So let me throw one more resistor on, and it's a 30 milli ohm resistor. Okay, so now I have a 30 milli ohm resistor on the device. And unfortunately, it's not giving us a correct reading. So we're on the 100 milli ohm. So that's the, I can't even see it. It's the bottom scale, right? So that's 0, 20, 30, 40, 50 would be in the middle. You know, we're, well, what are we measuring? Um, 10, 15, I think is what we're measuring. So clearly it's not that great when it comes down to these very extremely low resistance, unless maybe, I mean, this is a 1% resistor though. So I would assume that they would actually give us a 30 milliohm resistor, but maybe uh, it is, uh, the meter is good. It could be the resistor, but it's probably the other way around. Um, but you know what, as I mentioned earlier, it's a magazine project. You're not going to get a perfect lab type quality however it's going to do great on the bench it does great with all those other resistors that i showed you and it will make a spot on the bench so this is actually my test bench i like to come over here and test out devices and also if i need to repair something and put a scope on it or something like that this is where i come let me just show you where it'll go right there. So that's where this project is going to go. And I had great fun making it. It was pretty, not simple, but I did run into some problems as usual and I sorted them out. So I'm glad I built it. And I thank you for watching this video. And if you haven't checked out some of my other videos, please check them out and like, and subscribe. Thanks. And bye for now.